Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we are kind of prepping for Kaldheim. The new set of magic is coming out in about a month, and one of the sub-themes in Kaldheim is Giant Tribal. Uh, Giant Tribal will be uh, Frost Giants in blue, and like Magma Fire Giants in red. Um, there's a lot of giant payoff cards. Um, there's some sagas, there's the new 4-mana giant that doubles damage from giant sources. So what I thought we'd do today is we have a fun one. Uh, kind of explore what giant uh, giants exist, what synergies are currently in standard, and see where we can build it. Now, I'll be playing in the early streamer event, similar to the last event, so we will be testing out all the new cards uh, before the general public, which is exciting. I'm probably going to take it Grixis Giants first. It uh, seems like a lot of the payoffs are in blue. Um, right now, we're going to be trying out Mardu Giants, so white, black, and red. It's primarily a red, black, splash, white deck. Um, and we'll be playing best of one today, just to try to test out these synergies and more um, quick games. Uh, I do have a sideboard if you do want to try it out in best of three. Um, but effectively, what we're looking to do is play with the Giants that we have in standard right now. Uh, we have Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Uh, it is an Elder Giant. Uh, very good against the rogues matchup we can escape it um, and they kind of draw us into it we have bone crusher giant probably one of the most commonly played red cards uh, removal and a creature at the same time we have mecha godzilla the weapon or crystalline giant uh, without the godzilla art um, so this gets a different type of counter on each of your turns so it is a three mana easy to cast no matter uh, what colors you put into it uh, we have tectonic giant so this is a card that always to me felt like the fringes of playability uh, being four mana could be holding it back or just the fact it doesn't have haste. There's a way we have around that. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but basically what we're trying to do here is uh, attack with it. You either get card advantage or deal damage to each opponent. And then finally we have Realm Cloak Giant. Realm Cloak allows us to wipe the board for five mana of all non-giant creatures. And then it, on the back side it is a 7-7 seven, seven Vigilance. The only non-giant creature in the deck is Murderous Rider. I just wanted a way to kill Planeswalkers. Um, and it's a good overall adventure card. Now, kind of the, the strategy of the deck is to kill the smaller creatures till you can get to your bigger drops. Um, so the way we do that, we have Blood Chief's Thirst, Eliminate, Heartless Act, uh, a Soul Seer thrown in there for like the bigger stuff. It's the Murderous Riders and Elspeth Conquer's Death, which can also get back our creatures. We also have some Shatter Skull Smashings as another way to, in the late game, uh, kill some stuff. And the card I wanted to try out here is Footfall Crater. Um, so we have these like big threats, but they could get chump block pretty easy. So if we give them trample and haste, something like tectonic giant becomes a lot more formidable if you top deck it and you smash in right away. Or if you have realm cloak giant and you're able to attack in with a 7-7 seven, seven trampler. Uh, in the early game, we can also cycle it. We really only want one. So it's card draw for colorless in a deck that doesn't really have card draw. So on the default, it's kind of like an opt. Um, with the upside of giving our stuff haste. It also fuels Crocs as escape. The mana base itself, um, we have the Trinome, we have a couple pathways, and then we have a couple temples, and then the Fabled Passages. Because we are a Croxa deck, in essence, we do want Fabled Passage to fuel the escape. Um, our sideboard, we, if you do want to play best of three, I was thinking Klinga Dust as another option for control or rogue matchups. Uh, the Duresses, Phoenix of Ash is another uh, recurring threat. You have Extinction Event if you need to deal with more aggressive slanted decks. Liliana for the like the controly matchups. A Cronin War for like Gruel or Food, and Heliod's Intervention for the Doom matchup. Um, the deck like Demir Control, like the heavy heavy removal deck, Counterspell decks could be a problem for this deck. So post board, I wanted to shift to something with like recurring threats or attack them on a different angle with like a Planeswalker. So we'll fire this up. Um, for those who do follow, I did hit Mythic with um, Mono Red Collected Company, uh, mostly Mono Red Company. Um, so that was a fun deck that I have played a bit on the channel, but we are testing for the MIQ. So we'll fire this up as we queue into this game. As always, if you do enjoy the content, and if you can, like, comment, and subscribe on the YouTube videos. And if you want to know when we go live on Twitch, as always, you can just hit that follow button. They're all free and easy ways to help the channel grow. So let's queue in. I think this hand is fine. I think I'm going to scry on one to try to hit an untap source. We want more lands anyways. Worst case, we just go Trinome here. Being on the play helps this hand a bit. 
So the best of one meta is a little bit shifted. You're going to see a lot more of this like white based aggro. That's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, with how the hand's slanting, we only really want two white sources ever. So we'll wait to see what they do and then go Bone Crusher. Okay, so because they can protect here, we'll kill it in response. See what they drop here. Second Bone Crusher is actually good. Um, I want to hold the Croxa for a later turn. So I think we just play this out. Say go. I want to get it to where they don't have as much in hand. So we're probably going to target this all seed regardless. Just because they can fizzle the activation. But we'll see what they play out here. If they go something like Linden. Okay, so that's fine. Heliod is something we can kill afterwards. Realm Cloak is also impactful here. Um, so we're going to get a Swamp with this. Um, the question is, just in terms of mana efficiency, if we want to play to the board this turn. Uh, or wipe their board, because this gets a card out of their hand. I think we're just going Bone Crusher this turn. We could have double spelled, but... We could still double spell with a land next turn. I'm gonna hold this off in terms of cracking because I do want to hit one more land. Yeah, if they're just spending their turn banishing light, I'm fine. Perfect. So here, we don't have anything in the graveyard yet. We can probably wait a turn I actually think we're just Bone Crushering this turn and then holding up Heartless Act. The reason being is they can get counters on it potentially and then the Heartless Act becomes less efficient. Okay, so a bit punished there. They're just going double here. Uh, we have enough red. It's a little worse. I wanted to get something in the graveyard. Okay, so we do have Footfall, which is interesting here. Um, I think what we're going to do here... Let's start with Croxa. they get enough devotion I can just kill whatever they play um, yeah that's fine so this makes any of our giants now a lot more effective because we can attack in right away with them I'm probably just going to kill this now. And then I'm going to Elspeth Conquers Death to Heliod. Soul Seer is another nice card. There was a consideration of just getting back a Banishing Light, but Heliod is something you don't want to let run loose. Plus we have this as just kind of an insurance. Um, I think we're just passing the turn. If they commit more to the board, I can just wipe it. I get back Croxa next turn, so they're kind of incentivized to playing out more. Our life total is not really an issue right now. Okay, if they're not going to play to the board, then we'll kill it. I was seeing if we could, like, two for one them. I think here, now we're just going offensive. 
we'll keep this. So it doesn't matter, it's gonna die anyways with the escape, but we take another card out of their hand. Give this haste. Smash in. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna use this just because it, it's another source of removal. Most of their stuff will be small. Yeah, even we kill this. That puts a card in our yard and then we can escape Croxa. So they might have just been holding on to those. Ooh, that's actually really good. Because now we get to just Croxa this turn with haste. We want to keep open. So this is playing out exactly how I wanted it to. Get rid of the card in their hand. Take three. Haste up Croxa. Dead. So let's move on to the next one. Let's queue up our next match with Giants. As I mentioned on the onset, I will be participating in the Early Access event for Kaldheim. So if you do have any cool uh, deck ideas, build arounds you like to see, stuff like that, do drop a comment on YouTube. Um, I put together a bunch of deck lists up on Aetherhub prior to the event, uh, so do check it out. Um, I think we're okay with this hand. We don't have removal. We have the Conqueror's Desk. We're against Yorian, so it's either Doom or Control. Um, so it is a bit slower. The Conqueror's Death is decent in this matchup. I actually think we do Mulligan, though. Okay, this hand's good. Let's put back one Footfall. Um, actually just think we are going to Enchant here. Giving this haste will be relevant. Okay, so we got the Mardu land. Um, so the question is, I can't give this haste anyways this turn, so I think we are going to just be playing this. I think we're good on lines here. Probably just going to go hard cast Bone Crusher. Drew another land, so I think we're actually going to just play this one turn behind. Scrybug here, we put Fabled Passage to the bottom and get a Fabled Passage. Best of one is kind of, from my experience, you're playing against either Demir X, like Blue Black X Control, or against some sort of Weenie Aggro. We're better suited against these aggro style strategies, against these heavy removal decks. Um, we're not the best. Like, if we draw Croxa, it should help the late game. Yeah. Seems like they've all adapted to the Midnight Clock. I guess they're playing for rogues. So, again, we're seeing the Footfall Crater being relevant here. So even if they kill here, I just... Uh, cast the tectonic giant so it's a bit awkward here because i do need to get a mountain to be able to cast the giant actually i can get a white source yeah if they're just going to one for one us that's fine so just rereading this until the end of your next turn it's been a while since i've uh, actually cast this card so we don't actually have a white source i forgot about that um, so we can get another red source here. So this giant, to be honest, it's probably not going to do much in this matchup. So I'm going to go with the card advantage. Do this again next turn. So even if they kill this, we can, if we could just chain together giants, we're in a pretty good spot. 
We can also get to the point where we're just hitting him for six a turn. So there's Sultai. So this might be the Titan's Nest version. Might be seeing an extinction event. Nope, they're just going Cultivate. They just have blue mana up, which bodes well. So we are kind of priced into paying for this, but they might be dead here. They might have a counter, no? Okay, well, we're just going to deal three to them. Deal three to them. Giants! Footfall Creator has been fantastic in this deck. Let's jump into the next one. More Mardu Giants. Footfall Creator is feeling nice. Let's see if we can tackle one win. I Kind of this is a culmination of games. Um testing out the deck. We ran into a couple Demir ones that were non-games. Uh, I think this deck in best of one is going to struggle against Demir. Um, just from like counters, stuff like that. Um, so I think we're going to scry. Get a red source on two. Opponents on some sort of colorless. This might be the... Um, there's like a mono black control Ugin list that we played in best of one. Unless they're just full out colorless, which kudos to our opponent. They might be field of ruining here. Okay, they're not. So I think this turn, I'm just getting this out. If they are colorless, they're going to have a hard time dealing with Godzilla. The longer this is on the field, the better. Next turn, if we need to, I can cycle this. Play out Croxa. Okay, so they are the mono black version. So this does get uh, with... Okay, so I'm going to take my extinct, my Conqueror's Death. We still have another... We have two answers to Ugin, which is nice. Okay, so we hit the land, which is nice here. I don't have a red source, which is kind of annoying. Let's start off by going to combat. Um... I think we're just going to cycle this, try to find a red source, just get a card out of their hand here. We play four swamps, I think, no, we play three swamps. We play three swamps and we've drawn all three of our basic swamps, kind of annoying. Opponent will be gaining four life next turn. At this point, I kind of hope they field us. It puts another card in the yard for Kraxa. Lithoform Engine. Okay. Opponent is on some shenanigans. I think we just pass here, hold up the stomp. Um, they're likely going to be playing Extinction Event, so I don't want to give them two three drops to ex exile. Like here I can stomp and Murderous Rider if needed. Murderous Rider particularly be good against this Barons in a couple turns. And what you want to do, especially against control, never overcommit against control. We have a threat. Our threat is evasive. OK, 
Okay, so another footfall. Again, let's start with attacking, given the least amount of information. We're getting keyword soup on this. Try to find that red source that we need. Perfect. So here, here I think I'm okay playing this out because if they kill either, I get Kroxa. We're looking at even and odd mana costs. So unfortunately this game, we weren't able to set up the footfall creators to get haste. I'm honestly thinking the white splash probably is just not worth having better mana. Um, the Conqueror's Death and the, the board wipe have been pretty negligible. Like the haste on the creatures and just having better mana feels like it would be a better approach. So if they activate this, we can kill it in response. Probably just going to... Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so as always, least amount of information possible. What'd you get? You have Hexproof now, so you are Exodia. I think I am still going to go with the card advantage. This is still a control deck, so if we can get ahead on resources, it's always good. Fine with that. Mm, I'm actually going to get the Fable Passage here. Oh no, it's play. Oh, I'm an idiot. You may play. Or are we still in combat? No, you should be able to. Yeah, you can do it. Derp. So here now I can set up the Croxa line. So I do want them to kind of tap out. So let's... They go Ugin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I can still Kroxa and kill them. So that's fine. If they go Extinction Event, they tap out. Yeah, we're fine. I can kill Kroxa, escape... Uh, sorry, I can kill Ugin if they have it. I can kill it with this, this, the extinction event, then they're tapped out. They can't uh, cave here. That's fine. That is pretty cool though. We'll give them that. So here we Croxa. I did not think of that line, so we do try, need to try to kill them here. This interaction has been amazing. So the one nice thing is if they try to exile this somehow, I can eliminate it. Unfortunately, this is only two damage. I want to keep my Croxa in the yard. Doing this on a basic is also impactful. Any big boy. Okay, that's something. So let's do this first. Because if they potentially only have lands. Okay, we got a card out of their hand. I guess we're just doing this. Take them down to one. The problem is beyond this, they get us. I mean, let's just keep forcing them to have stuff. 
I, I want they have two barons anyways, so killing one isn't the the best. If they kill this, it goes back into our library. To keep on top. Literally just needed a third toughness. So they can activate this. They can take it out of combat. Any of our creatures, they can have a blocker. Um, just play this out. So this is the problem. Now we're falling behind a bit. They're going to get rid of my Blood Chief, so if this last card is Ugin, it's a bit annoying. I get two draws. Nice. This is, this engine's actually saved on this game. I don't think they have enough black sources, per se, in the deck. Oh no, they exile my Croxus. No! No! All right, we got two more. I completely forgot about chapter three. I don't think, uh, well we have Bone Crushers, we can go face if we ever draw anything that's an online. This takes them up to seven though. We are getting to the junction of the game that is referred to as garbage time. They stabilized the double extinction event, ended up getting us. Now they can just beat in with this. They've managed to draw all their Crawling Barons. What do you got? Ugin. Monument. Okay. Uh, we did. We did. Okay, so I'm doing this expecting them to block. Because then I can just Blood Chiefs Thirst it, at least kill it. I think at this point we fake like we have something. Surprised they're going at this point all in on one. Leaves them a little bit susceptible. Like we've shown that we've had murderous riders. How do we get out of this? Do we get out of this? I need an eliminate or murderous rider. But the problem is they can just keep like protecting. I guess tectonic giant also can just deal some damage. But now they're just making copies of these to gain more life. We've also drawn every line possible that we can have. We're never going to need this much mana. Okay, so they're diversifying their threats here. I was trying to get the bait out one of them. The problem is they have four, so we're not really going to deal with all four. Cool deck by the opponent. I'm so used to Historic, I keep thinking like, we'll just draw a Braid. Eugene? Yeah, we'll give, we'll give the opponent the GG here. 
All right, Giants Tribal, what did we think? Um, the white cards were not needed. Fix your mana base would probably be my suggestion. Um, notably speaking, uh, there is a cute synergy with the Realm Cloak Giant, um, but we suffered by having a lot of lands coming into play tapped um, from a tempo perspective. I think ideally what we'd want is uh, just more ways to either fill the bin for Croxa. I think stuff maybe like Agonizing Remorse could be decent. Um, just going up more removal potentially. Uh, another alternative, um, I think against like Control, having stuff like Duress might even be decent. Um, but just cutting these four cards, fixing up your mana base, going up the full Temples, full Fabled. Um, I probably keep a couple Trinomes. Um, just to have, but then just upping your net amount of basics and just going from there. Um, in terms of other like giants in the set that are currently, um, there's not much. There's Thrix, but I don't think you want to be playing Thrix. There's Shatter Skull Charger. Um, it's pretty mediocre because you have to bring it back to your hand if you don't pay the kicker. So you don't really want to be paying five mana for your threats. Um, the Tectonic Giant was actually really nice with the haste. Um, ability. Um, so there's a good shell here, I think. Um, I will say this Footfall Crater far exceeded my expectations. Um, pairing that with the Tectonic Giant really improves the quality of the card. But uh, if I were to explore it some more, like I said, I'd cut these four, um, probably just go up like two duress or even... Um, like dragon fire or just some sort of removal or cheap spell. There's a couple times we just wanted one or two cards in the graveyard. Um, so that's a way that you could kind of go from there. Anyways, thanks for watching as always. Uh, if you can, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time. Do drop any decks and ideas, cards, build around, stuff like that for Kaldheim in the comments as well. And we'll start getting those up. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.